Anytime I want to feel really old, I just look at a mini PC. Tiny computers like this can now comprehensively outperform the big dorky desktop tower you might have been working or gaming on a decade or so ago. One such compact machine that's been making me feel my age in recent weeks is the Geekom GT1 Mega, roughly the size of the previous gen Mac Mini, but with more storage and RAM as standard, this core ultra contraption could be worth your cash if you're looking for a miniature Windows box that's packing plenty of power and some upgradability. Getting started with the basic physical frame of this thing, it's a slick looking aluminium shell with a pleasant matte finish that's not far off the aesthetic of the Mac Mini. It's markedly larger in all directions than the current M4 model of course, but then it's packing a lot more in terms of ports, parts, and let's be honest it's x86 so a decent amount of that internal space is taken up by fans and heat sinks. Both left and right sides have ventilation holes to aid with cooling while the back is furnished in plastic and packs a more traditional grill to pump out hot air. Again, this is x86, what are you going to do? But yeah, this is a simple enough design that doesn't look cheap in the way that some other mini PCs can. This computer is almost all metal and it looks fantastic, and unlike the current gold standard in miniature computing, the power key is in a place you can actually reach to, how about that? Plus you're given a lot more ports to play with, a traditional strength for Geekom's mini PCs, so let's dig in. The back panel is chock full of connectivity. Alongside the barrel connector for AC power, you can also use one of the two USB 4 40 gigabit ports to power this mini PC, though do check that whatever monitor or other device you're connecting can provide sufficient power. The 65 watts of my Huawei MateView monitor wasn't enough, causing crashes at startup. If you can use USB power though, then it's a great way to save some clutter around the back of this thing. And and the bundled Visa mounting kit can also help you hide the device itself behind a monitor if you like. So those two USB 4s are your main big boy connectors for adding versatile peripherals like eGPUs and ultra-fast SSDs. They're joined around the back by dual HDMI 2.0 ports, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, useful if you're planning on using this mini PC as part of a home server setup of some kind, and finally another USB-A 10 gig and good old USB 2 for your keyboard. Around front, four more USB-A's at that same 10 gigabit speed alongside 3.5mm audio. I'm not plugging in all that many USB-A gadgets these days, but if you are then this certainly saves you using a hub. And for added security you'll find a Kensington lock slot on the right edge. And the video creator in me definitely appreciates the full-sized SD slot over on the left here. Plus Wi-Fi 7 support is nice to see and not necessarily guaranteed with similar mini PCs. And the GT1's Wi-Fi performance was similar to other Meteor Lake laptops I've tested, managing around a gigabit in each direction over Wi-Fi 6E from my Google Nest Wi-Fi located one room over. Now that's a lot of connectivity that should cover you for just about anything you're going to be doing with this PC. Now let's dig into the specs. The Geekom GT1 Mega is powered by Intel's Core Ultra 9 185H. That's the top end first generation Core Ultra from the Meteor Lake generation. Not to be confused with the second gen Core Ultras aka Luna Lake. Right out of the gate that's a little disappointing to see Meteor Lake and not Luna Lake in this box. Not so much for the additional efficiency of that chip, after all battery life is a non-issue for this PC, but mainly for the improved graphical performance. Luna Lake's integrated GPU is based on Intel's newer and more powerful Battlemage XE2 architecture versus the first gen Alchemist GPU in use here. Still, as we'll see in a bit, this chip still packs a punch in terms of performance for everything up to and including gaming. And it's joined in the model I'm reviewing by 32 gigs of RAM and a 2TB Gen 4 PCIe SSD, both of which are upgradable. And memory wise, this PC does support up to 64 gigs, though you'll need to do that upgrading yourself as the SKU Geekom is selling maxes out at 32 gigs. And from what I've seen in teardown videos, actually cracking this thing open to upgrade it can be kind of a hassle involving prizing off these glued on rubber feet. Not ideal. The GT1 ships with a clean install of Windows 11 Pro with absolutely no bloat. Well at least none from Geekom anyway. And in day-to-day -day performance this machine absolutely flies. It's at least as quick as the Core Ultra 9 185H laptops I've used over the past few months. And if you're willing to go into the BIOS and enable performance mode, you'll be able to eke out even more number crunching horsepower from this chip. That additional performance naturally comes at the cost of additional fan noise. Even in the normal performance mode you will notice the fans spinning up from time to time to a moderate extent with this machine. It's by no means an egregious amount of noise but it does bear mentioning considering this box is going up against the Mac Mini which has been basically silent ever since the switch to Apple Silicon back in 2020. 
As a brief aside, it would be nice if there was a way to hop between the regular performance mode and the high performance mode without having to go into the BIOS. Benchmark wise, the GT1 sits in the middle of the other two Core Ultra 9 185H mini PCs we've tested in terms of sheer computing power in Geekbench. For additional context, the numbers here land somewhere between an M2 Pro and M3 on the Apple side. And other benchmarks like Cinebench landed in a similar range to the Asus and Minisform competition running that same Intel chip. In day-to-day -day productivity tasks, the Core Ultra 9 and Arc iGPU were more than capable of tearing through layer-dense Photoshop work and even handling moderate amounts of video editing. Complex video sequences would definitely max out the GPU, but even 4K timelines using large amounts of source footage were pretty easily handled by this machine. My typical setup with this mini PC involved using it with a keyboard and mouse plugged into the two rear USBs and a Huawei MateView 28.2 inch monitor connected via one of the USB 4 ports with the other USB 4 plugged into a 4TB Crucial SSD. A pretty vanilla setup, but I like to keep things simple. Intel's integrated GPUs have gotten better and better over the last couple of generations, and so it wasn't too much of a surprise to see the Geekom GT1 Mini performing well in light gaming. The Arc GPU made short work of older titles like Team Fortress 2 and Bioshock Infinite naturally, and relatively speaking, even more recent titles like Doom Eternal were perfectly playable at 40 to 50 FPS with medium details and automatic display scaling at 3000 by 2000. This definitely isn't a gaming machine, at least not on its own. You can absolutely add an eGPU like the One X Player one that I have here to boost your graphical prowess. And if you do, obviously that'll give you a substantial boost in video editing performance as well. But even just relying on the integrated graphics chip, you'll find there are plenty of titles available and eminently playable on this speedy little machine. So this is a great little Windows machine for almost any kind of productivity or light play related stuff you're likely to want to do on a PC, right up to 4K video editing. And it has the expandability to mean you can improve its performance in future through an SSD or RAM upgrade, or through the addition of an eGPU to supercharge its graphics performance. That's obviously something you don't get with the computer that Geekon was clearly inspired by when it was building this thing, the Mac Mini. And that comparison is particularly stark this year in a couple of ways. Apple's Mini is smaller than ever before, and faster than anything this sized on the PC side. And yet the base config of the M4 Mac Mini represents something of a Faustian bargain. You're stuck with just 16 gigs of RAM and a mid 256 gigs of storage. Geekom has way more of both out of the box, though in a larger chassis with a more power hungry chip. That's one of the reasons why I'm disappointed to not see the newer Intel Luna Lake chips in this mini PC. The more efficient processor would mean less fan noise, less wasted power, and potentially a smaller enclosure if that's your thing. And graphically, it would mean a mini PC with not just a massive PC gaming library available, but a beefier GPU to really take advantage of it. Maybe next year. Aside from that, this is a fantastic little computer with few real flaws to report. At its list price of just shy of $900, you're getting a lot for your money, especially in terms of RAM, storage, and yes, ports. All those ports. I've had a lot of fun using the Geekom GT1 Mega over the past few weeks, and I'm already experimenting and seeing how I can turn this into a modular mini powerhouse with the addition of a portable eGPU. Leave a note in the comments if you want to see more on how that went and how much difference it makes to how I use this machine. And let me know, do Mini PCs like this kind of make the traditional PC tower seem obsolete now, especially when they are this powerful? Would you be tempted to pick one up instead of a traditional desktop or even a laptop? Stick around and subscribe for more PC and Mac coverage, but for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.